Yeah, you know, sad for here the passing of Mike Leach. You know, I didn't know Mike, but uh, he had a huge impact on the game of football, certainly college football. Um, so, you know, sad to, sad to hear about that down in uh, Starkville. I thought he was a, a very big innovator in college football, you know, in a time where not a lot of people are real, really authentic anymore. Uh, Mike certainly was authentic, and I, whether you agree with him or not, you appreciate that. I know you guys that have covered football a long time probably missed that a little bit, but sorry to hear about Mike. Yeah, Coach, uh, where, where are you all at with, uh, you know, moving, uh, you know, getting Desmond ready and uh, uh, any updates on Marcus's uh, status? Yeah, so, um, you know, he's got uh, Marcus scheduled to have surgery next week, so we'll put him on our today. Uh, Desmond, excited to get going this week. Uh, the challenge, you know, playing a divisional game down in New Orleans, we're excited about it, been preparing, um, and excited to get out here and practice today and you know we'll continue to go through the process make sure we do everything we can to be ready to roll Sunday one of the challenges with you know him and Logan who uh, you know he's played in 11 games but uh, you know you all you know we'll have to get him ready I would gather and maybe yeah, friends it's, also yeah it's, yeah it's part of the job you know D-Led whatever you're dealing with injuries things come up during the season you certainly see it around the league you certainly you guys all saw Baker Mayfield going there last week and Going there and won a game, you know, it, it's what happens. Uh, it's our job. It's our job as coaches to get guys ready, guys that are healthy and active roster. And so we're excited about the, about the challenge and look forward to going down to New Orleans. Could you say what kind of surgery Marcus is having? Is it for meniscus or is he all yeah. it up? You know, the details, again, I, not the medical expert, but it's a pr procedure similar to that. I don't want to give you any false information. So I just know it's scheduled and we'll put them on IR today. Uh, obviously, when you have a backup quarterback, you know, he's only getting a certain amount of attention and work, not just on the field, but behind the scenes. So sure. what does it look like now, the difference with you and, and Desmond's interaction um, behind the scenes now as opposed to what we uh, Yeah, no, we've been, um, you know, all of us, you know, behind the scenes have done it a lot of different ways and different roles. And, you get, you know, you kind of cater to where your the players are at. And then with Matt last year, um, we had a different process, different than I had with Ryan in Tennessee. Matt was obviously a veteran. Some of the things that Dave and I did with him and, and Charles, you know, that was a different process. We had a different process with Marcus going around. And Des, we've been doing a lot of different things because that's important to make sure you, you build a relationship because, you know, they're always a play away and you, and you, you got to make sure that they, you guys have a common vision as a play caller and a quarterback. So Des has been great. Like his, and we were talking about it on Monday. Jeff, you know, I really, in the last month, you've seen a lot of accelerated growth. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things we're going to ask quarterback to do. We feel comfortable where he's at. And we're excited to see what it looks like on Sunday. Like the guy with Logan, been with Logan before. Certainly have, that's a huge job, uh, especially for a young quarterback. And Logan's a guy I have a lot of confidence in. And, you know, we were fortunate to be able to get him in here. And uh, guy knows me really well, can kind of fill in some of the blanks. For him, and that, that that's important. That that role, especially with a young quarterback, is, is vitally important. I, I know you. I, I'm sure you've been asked this before, but when you were scouting Desmond, watching film, mm -hmm. all that stuff, what really jumped out at you about him? Well, there's a lot of things. You know, there's things that you see on film as you go through it, the evaluation process. Uh, certainly, what he did last year. Uh, you know, a game that stuck out to me was that Notre Dame game. You know, uh, when he was at Cincinnati, you know a lot of, about Desmond from people like. I trust in this profession. Um, loved his mentality. You could see it on film, and then certainly when you got to know the person as you go through the long process of it, not just the speed dating, you know, 15-minute interview they have at some of these league things as you really try to dig in and get to know the person. Uh, the mindset, how he saw the game, his mentality, uh, his story. And then we were fortunate enough to get him, and we'll see what it looks like, you know, Sunday, and more importantly, as the rest of the season goes along. Is yeah, that something Mike, that y'all knew about? Mike, look, you play this game, it got you. Pretty common in the league. A lot of guys have things, and things come up. It's a it's a rough sport, Mike. So things come up. Those are things that, that happen in, in pro football. A guy has an issue, go see a doctor. That's what happens. So, you know, 
telling you how, what I have. If you want to see the doctor, he's got a procedure schedule, going on IR, and it's the way it goes. We've had it, a lot of guys, right? CP went on IR. Elijah Wilkinson goes on IR. We've got those you know, spots now to return. Pretty common around the league. And our focus now is the guys that are healthy are going to be active. We've got to get ready to go play a division game. So. I get that. I'm just asking sure. you, when you signed him, you, you, since it's a chronic thing, if it's something that you I think any to... football player, Michael, and maybe even you, if you put us, you put you in an MR machine, you live life, you know what I mean? Like you could, yeah, no, I'm no, probably everybody in here. So uh, physicals are part of it. He's a football player. And those are, you get physicals and a lot of guys, or everybody you sign, you know, it's just the way it goes. Could he have been beneficial on the sideline as a mentor? You know, Jeff, I understand the question. It doesn't matter. It was a hypothetical. The, the circumstances are, it'll be Logan out there. And I got a lot of faith in Logan. And if he has to go in there and play, he'll, he'll be able to operate. So. Happy Logan's here. So it's not like Felipe would have a bigger role or, or move in there at all, like Felipe's still the tight end? There are a lot of things that Felipe does a lot of a lot of stuff for us. Some of it, um, if we have to, you know, there's other guys we have as emergency quarterbacks. Um, Felipe's a unique position player with the ability to go back there if we needed him to, and he's done it in the preseason and did it last year. In the context of evaluating collegiate quarterbacks, do you pay much attention to what system they're in, whether it's and do you believe that that makes them maybe more ready to get ready for the pro game, or does that matter? Hmm. That's another good subjective uh, debate, Josh. You know, a lot of guys – I think the most unfair thing when you get on tape, and there's been way more accomplished coaches have said this than me, older coaches have spoken the truth. You know, when you're watching tape, like you have a pretty good idea of what they're being asked, but unless you're sitting in a meeting room, like I could give you a play, I've run it, you know, five different systems and it looks similar and we taught it five different ways, the little nuances of it. So you don't try to, the arrogance sometimes uh, makes me roll my eyes when guys, you know, evaluators or people are like, well, he's supposed to do this and that. Well, you're not sitting in the meeting. You don't know, maybe they're trying to stay away from this corner this week. And I think there's a lot of arrogance, people that evaluate coaches and personnel people that don't know. And that's why you got to do your own thorough research and then to say, hey, what can translate? Really, how does he learn? How does he see it? Because sometimes it's not fair. They may not have to ask him. You may never ask a guy to throw hot. You may never ask a guy to check anything at the line of scrimmage. And so you've seen guys come from different offenses. I think you get pigeonholed sometimes, and it's unfair to the players. The rules are a little bit different in college, and you can't fault somebody for running a different system. It may be wildly successful or whatever. So that's I think that's why part of the problem why it's so hard to predict the success rate of quarterbacks, plus what kind of situation are you putting them into? Is it stable? Is it unstable? Every day they walk in the building, you know, like – uh, a Bravo TV show, that can affect them. They go on there, it's musical chairs at line, nobody to throw to, five different play callers. I mean, there's a lot of things that go in there. And history is littered with that. When guys are ready, you hope it's stable, you have a chance to have success, there's, there's a uh, long-term vision there. I think that usually plays out well for some quarterbacks. I'm sure there's an outlier or two, but if you really look at the history of the league and guys that became really good quarterbacks, they usually were able to, to play in some stable situations. You stressed, mind you, that, that uh, your decision at quarterback was based on performance, Correct. Not, not health. Nevertheless, uh, given just last week what we saw around the league at, at the quarterback position, was there any discussion, uh, since Marcus was able to play, uh, was there any discussion on protecting your uh, flexibility and your options at the position and having him wait uh, longer to, to have this procedure? Again, you know, I'm not going to go on these practices. We're, we're moving on. We're putting them on. I appreciate the question, but my focus is now on the guys that are healthy on the active roster and getting these guys ready to play. It doesn't mean like all our players had a conversation with Kyle Pitts this morning and check in on them. Care about all those guys. But the reality is, you know, from a professional standpoint on Sunday, my focus is getting the guys that we'll have up ready to roll. And uh, doesn't mean we don't check in, care. We have a great medical team. We've got a great organization. So it's like Kyle. TQ, a lot of guys, uh, we check on them, but focus now, you know, we get in here in the meetings this morning, the installs and, and going out to practice. Since you mentioned that, guys, how is Kyle doing? And also you said before the bye that you'd know more about TQ after the bye. Yeah, I mean, both those guys, I, I told you, um, Kyle, we wouldn't see him. Don't anticipate seeing TQ. What do you want to see from this? And I don't mean throw sure. three touchdowns, don't throw any Yeah, I mean, that's – I mean, I mean, when, when you're looking at him, what do you want to see? Yeah, well, obviously, we're, this is a good test for him. Right? You're going on the road against a divisional opponent, veteran defense, uh, 
defense is really fundamentally sound. They've been together for a while. Most of the core, they know who they are. You want to see him operate, see how he handles the pressure, the stress, situational football, line of scrimmage, in between series. There's a lot of things. Obviously, you uh, we need to go down and get the win, but as you're evaluating him short term and then really seeing long term is how he's handling a lot of that stuff. But operationally, uh, will be paramount, especially starting that game. Yeah, Coach, in Kyle, okay. What are the challenges specifically with New Orleans for a first time kind of quarterback? Well, anybody, any quarterback, I mean, you've seen them avalanche veteran quarterbacks. If you, you know, you, you play into their hands, they can make it hell for you. They're built to, to assault the pocket. They got, they got it long, they're, they're powerful. It's a, I got a lot of respect for them. That's, that's, it's a fun challenge in there. Uh, so, and they got really veteran players from third level on down. Demario Davis is as good as any inside linebacker in this league. They got a lot of length and power. So if you get get off track and uh, you get into some obvious situations, they can make it help for you. Yeah, Coach, what did his, um, you know, I know that the, the Notre, game, Notre Dame game, you mentioned that, the Houston games, UCF games were big games for him. Sure. Um, what did Coach Fickle say, you know, about his uh, traits as a leader and as a quarterback? Because I know their intangibles at that position are more important than some of the other ones. Yeah, again, I mean, any private conversation that happens in private, I know a lot of guys like to name drop, uh, not to call anybody out, D-Lev, but in all seriousness, no, I mean, I'll keep those conversations private. But, but you know, some guys, they, they get these, whether it's agents or, you know, they all have their PR guys now, I think it's 16 or whatever they have now. Um, I don't even know how that, that works anymore. Um, so, you know, who knows what's getting pumped? You know, who's the friendly media source or whatever? And you get these ridiculous uh, narratives on guys. But the one thing I'll say about Dez, Dez is authentic. I appreciate that about him. Um, he's got a realness to him. And we'll see how it translates. Obviously, we've only seen it in the preseason, but we're excited to see what it looks like Sunday. What reiterates your confidence that Desmond is ready for Sunday? Well, again, until you actually go out there and do it, there is an unknown. There's a risk we talked about Monday. But everything that's led up to this point, everything we can control, other than obviously he hadn't been out there, the preparation, how he's come along, it's a long, long season. I feel like every season it takes on uh, four lives. You know, here we are in the fourth quarter of ours. So you can see day after day those habits. That's what you want to see. Um, and there are a lot of guys that have a spark early in the year, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're not playing, and they, they kind of wander off. That hasn't been the case. Uh, if anything, he's gotten better. So we'll, <laughs> obviously, uh, we'll see what it looks like Sunday. But uh, that's what gives me confidence. But until we go play and do it, so they're just words right now. How may this help Drake and, and what you guys are trying to do with him? In what regards? And just in terms of tar- not only targets, because I know he's been a primary a lot, but just in terms of maybe some of the more deep shots you guys have taken. I'm not going to get into scheme and game plans, but with all of our players, I mean, we hope to, again, be a, a more balanced offensive. That's kind of the intent. You know, you don't want to be too one dimensional one way or the other. You got strengths, you know, you play in the strengths of your team. It may change year to year. You know, that's that's part of the art of coaching, but you'd like the perfect world to be pretty pretty balanced so you don't become obvious. How unique is it for you to have a quarterback room that's so young with both guys who haven't started in a regular season game or even thrown an NFL pass in game? What challenges is this a presented There's always yourself? a challenge, you know. And there's, that's part of the job. It makes it fun. I mean, it's probably the only quarterback room. I think there's two guys from the state of Kentucky in there. You can look that fun fact up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there's always some kind of challenge, you know, you're dealing with something, whether you're dealing with a 14-year veteran or you know, like a rookie. Um, we try to adapt. That's the thing is we're not so rigid that it's one size fits all. You know, we have certain philosophies we b- believe in, but there's certain things I'll ask Desmond to do that we didn't ask Marcus or we didn't ask Matt to do last year or vice versa. There's certain things we relied on Matt to do that we're not necessarily going to ask Desmond to do. Accelerated growth from Desmond. Where mm-hmm. do you see that most notably? Really, m- mentally. And, the, you know, the things that, you know, I went on record talking about impressive. And again, there was a practice reps, and it, it's all the stuff leading up to this, all the training leading up to this. We obviously got to go out there and do it for real on Sunday. So, and then no matter if it's great or bad, we're not going to overreact. You know, we're, it's a good test for us. We, the game we, you know, we need to win. And uh, so, like I said, I'm excited. So I did a guy here, uh, you know, the bye week. It seems like it's been forever since we played. Uh, I'm excited to get back out there at practice. How much do you take from playing them in week one? 
considering how different they look? Yeah, I mean, it's everybody. Uh, Mike, it's a good question. There's a natural evolution that happens, you know, some of it as, as you grow and evolve and some of it out of necessity, injuries, you know, personnel that's at your disposal, maybe the game plan, who you're playing. Uh, those are all those things that are fun to try to figure out, hey, this is what they're trying to attack or what they, they did. Um, but most teams change. I mean, they have a fundamental way, that, uh, the way they go about their business up front. Um, like I said, I think they, they're really well coached, especially on the defensive line. And uh, Dennis does a good job. You know, that's when you got veteran players and history now, this will be our you know, fourth game playing them since I've been in Atlanta. I played them in 19 when I was in Tennessee. Um, they've been pretty good on defense since he's been there. Do you think it could be beneficial Desmond not having Marcus in the locker room and he has to cleanly win it over and not have the guy who's been benched? Those are great subjective there. arguments. I don't, you know, if it looks great on Sunday, I'm sure we can run with that narrative. If it doesn't, say he missed him. I don't, you know, we'll see. Do you all, I mean, they, they the, the, um, on the, the rivalry, you know, shots go back and forth and, you know, they'll take shots at y'all. And do you all note that they just what got kind of shots? Um, 28 to 3 and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, they, they just got busted for uh, player uh, uh, Did injury things yeah. and got fined. I, I don't concern. have to watch out for that? I don't concern myself with stuff that's out of my control, D-Led. What, what? Uh, you know, the pettiness of social media, not really concerned. Life's a lot better. I know we, you know, it's kind of the space you guys are forced to work in. I will say this, when you can take it with a grain of salt, life's a lot better. People that live on their, live through their avatar, probably live a pretty miserable life. Probably afraid to go out of their house too. So try not to do that. You'll be a lot happier. I understand. I actually do feel for you guys because that's part of the, the platforms you guys have to use. Um, yeah, I, I, that doesn't concern me. Do you let not, not one step. Not, not that I fault you for the question, but our control, hang in control. We got plenty of things we got to worry about. It's a really good football team, regardless of whatever the record is. It's the National Football League. Uh, tough environment. We're excited to go down there and play. With, with Des, I mean, have you observed like, have you observed any change in his demeanor or whatnot? Considering he's kind of gone from a guy who's kind of sitting in the background to some extent to this kind of thrust into a leadership role. No, not necessarily. Yeah, I mean. But if all of a sudden he tried to act like somebody he wasn't, I think there was a problem. I think he was phony. He's not. So he said, we'll see how it goes. You know, I'm sure he'll be excited. And hopefully you guys talk to him, give you how he feels. But we got confidence in him, and, or we wouldn't put him out there.